everybody, and welcome to, I think this is gonna be a really, really cool episode of the show because we are driving to the very first investment property I ever purchased that I'm actually selling today. So I purchased this property back in 2014, I believe. It's, it's a fourplex rental property. You saw me doing some renovations to it last time I cleared out the tenant mix. Well, since then, my business has you know, continued to grow and I've decided that my focus is not gonna be at all on small rental properties. For scale, scalability reasons is, is the primary reason behind it, that I can take you know, the proceeds that I make off of this property and put it either into a commercial building that I own or into a 38 unit apartment complex I'm looking at so I can take four units and turn it into 38. Pretty cool. And, and this is an interesting look because I have done and I've completed what's called the deal cycle. And basically that's looking and saying, okay, the property you know, was purchased here, I had a plan for holding it, and then I had an exit strategy of where the property was gonna go and where that was gonna take me and where I wanted to go and the period of time. And, and that's an important thing to consider when you're purchasing property so you don't just buy every good deal that you wanna have, not only a plan for your type of real estate investing, whether you're doing multifamily flips, single family rehabs, you know, owner financing, larger multifamily acquisitions, whatever it is, so you wanna have that plan, but then you wanna have a plan for each piece of property you're purchasing so you can continue growing and scaling your business. Um, we're here, let me unlock the gate and we'll talk a little bit more about it. So here we are, this was such a huge deal, like this, is what I started in in real estate. And I was so scared when I bought this property. And I put a lot of my life savings into this property. And I thought it was a good deal. I knew it was in a really unique location. It's right on the river. Um, and, and had some neat value add opportunities to it. Yeah. So we cleared out a ton of stuff for the first time I bought it. We did a bunch of basic updating to it. I rehabbed the whole back unit. Let's go check that one out. So I bought this, I had been a realtor for, I don't know, probably about a year and, and was trying to just learn about San Antonio and about real estate and wasn't enjoying really being a realtor. Knew I wanted to do something different and it was, you know, the first thing that, I, that made sense to me is I need some cash flow so I could not spend as much time focusing on the other parts of my business and focus a little bit more on real estate. So I wanted something with cash flow. And a fourplex, obviously, it's the maximum you can buy with a conventional type of financing, which is what I got for this property. And I, and I bought this also specifically because you can see that's the San Antonio River right over there. And like those trails where you can see that car over there. That's where like you can take that all the way into downtown. So I bought this. This property was listed for $140,000. My broker who I was working with at the time knew some information about it and basically I ended up buying it for $68,000. So less than half of what they were asking for it. There's a lady that had passed away. Her, her kids didn't live here in Texas or in San Antonio. They just had some people kind of sending up money every month. This unit was vacant um, when I bought it. And so, yeah, every day after I would finish working at a real estate startup company that I was doing marketing for, I would come down here at like five or six and I just tried to figure out how to rehab something. And uh, learned about primer and learned about how you can prime like this kind of walls because paint doesn't really stick to this. There's a specific type of primer called gripper for all you need to know. And gripper the whole thing and paint it all and then learned how to put down laminate floors. And I was like putting down laminate floors and learned a little bit about electric and learned how to hang a fan and hang the chandelier. Did a little bit of foundation work to it. I was like, hell, maybe I need to move here for a while, like live here so I can like be really engaged with my tents. I never ended up doing that, but I was totally down for it. Seriously, so many late nights, like working here from like five to 10, getting this place ready. Yeah, learned about, learned about being a landlord. So I, yeah, uh, so bought it for 68. This one was 650, the front one was 800. So 6, 612 plus eight, 2000 is like cash flowing about $2,400 a month. It was all bills paid. So I was probably profiting, depending on the month, depending on the expenses, how, what the utilities were and everything. I was profiting between 1,000 and 1,500 a month normally when it was rented. So, you know, saw some great cash flow. And like, you know, when you're going in real estate, I didn't have a bunch of other streams of income. I didn't have flips that were getting sold. I didn't have, you know, really savings because I put them out of this property. I put them into my first rehab property. So like there were plenty of months at that thousand bucks, $1,500 was so like, that was what I lived on. And having that money like literally allowed me to keep going in real estate. 
and living small and just being willing to do whatever it took. So yeah, so fast forward about three, three and a half years today, to today. Um, I've had other rental properties, I've sold them. This is my last of my smaller multi-family rentals and um, we're selling today for 166,000. So I'm um, getting a check for about $108,000 later today that obviously not all that's profit, some of that's equity that I'm pulling out of there. But you know, that's a great deal. It's an amazing first deal. And so seeing that, you know, and it, it goes back to the opportunity cost of money, I think, because I could keep this and the area would continue going up in value. Like this area is massively improving. But if I can take $100,000 today and over the next year turn it into $200,000, why am I going to wait another three years for this property to appreciate another $100,000? Like, that's a great play if you're not wanting to be actively involved in your investing. I want to be really actively involved in my investing at this point. I mean, this is what I do. I'm full time and I want to keep pushing that. So, you know, it's great to have these buy and holds, but don't get caught up in buy and holds. Don't get caught up in the nostalgia of any one deal. Like, this is a really neat property. This is half an acre on the river and this is really not really replicatable especially not in this location and if i waited i probably could have gotten another 30 forty thousand dollars for the property but i had a cash buyer they were ready to go it made sense and it makes sense not to get nostalgic about real estate do not get overly emotional come down here and make a cool video about your first property but move on and keep pushing and and take the revenue and remember that if money is you know tied up in some place it's not getting used anywhere else and that can limit you, and you will always reach these these levels. So if you can liquidate funds from a project, take it to another project, it's totally worth doing. So mistakes made here. Um, I didn't hire a property management company right at first. I tried to self-manage, which I would not recommend to anybody that isn't really specifically interested in property management to do, because it's a lot of time, and it's really difficult when you're the owner of the property and your tenants know you're the owner of the property to have any sort of like a barrier there and they will, you know, for better or worse, they'll 100%, they think if you own someone's house, they think you have more money than God, and that if, you know, the rent is really incidental. And obviously in my case, especially starting out, that was 100% not the case. Like I needed that money. That money paid the mortgage and paid the utilities to keep their lights on and made me a little bit of money so I could keep doing this. So I would say get a property management company as quickly as possible and then realize that anytime units are off the market, like that's money you're losing. So if you're like, oh, I don't wanna spend $2,000 to get some repair done, but it's gonna take you two or three months to do that yourself and you rent six, seven, eight hundred dollars a month, like you've already lost that money. So again, having something generating that cash flow, get the repairs done, you know, I, I probably would have hired, well, I couldn't really at first, but you know, hiring someone to do those repairs for you, to get that stuff done um, and, and keep the property moving along. But I would definitely get a property management company and definitely try and figure out something with someone else helping you with the maintenance, unless that's something that, again, you're really excited about or you have a background in, in property management or carpentry or something like that, which I had none of that. Well, it's done, moving on. We're off to the closing table and let's see, it's 11.05 at one o'clock, so in an hour and 55 minutes, this property will no longer be mine. It's been fun, it's been real. Keep pushing.